quite uh, quite an awesome little fast run indeed there. Let's see if we can go through a, a couple more donations here, and then we'll uh, get into Die after this, run by TGH. Have $150 from Timothy Rim. It says, good luck, have fun, prevent cancer. It's really, can't ask for much more than that. $15 from Cronkleberry says, Risk of Rain is my favorite game and makes the graveyard shift more bearable. $10 from Zazar says, I put hundreds of hours into Risk of Rain and never even considered that it could be speed ran. Got to donate for the surprise of seeing in the schedule. Keep up the good work. $50 from Abacus Avenger. Risk of rain, best kind of risk. $50 from Nickasaur says, when Risk of Rain came out, I was sick in bed watching my partner play it. Now that it's on AGDQ, I'm sick in bed watching it be speedrun. Guess it's a tradition now. Love this game and keep on rocking, runners. All right, before uh, die, we've got an interview here, so uh, check this out. Hello, I am joined here by Bullets and Sigma, the two runners for the lovely planet race that's going to be coming up in two runs from now. Uh, and we're just going to get into it, ask you guys a couple questions here. Now, the first thing is how th this, we've actually seen lovely planet once, um, and it was all levels, right? And we saw that at, uh, what was that against Sigma? SGDQ? Uh, 2015, I think. 2015. 2015 yeah. uh, now, this time we're seeing any percent we're seeing as a race. Are you guys more excited for, you know, a race? Or you really think that it'll show kind of the fast-paced action of the game and any percent as well? How is that category pretty different? So, actually, the all levels run was kind of the inspiration for me to get into uh, running Lovely Planet. So, it's cool to finally actually be able to run it, especially with the person that did the race for it. So, for me, it's kind of got that sort of importance to it. <laughs> That's but, pretty cool. And just any percent's very 10 minutes of no stopping, just go, 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 go. No, no breaks, no nothing like that. Mm. So, it's interesting in that uh, sort of light. Yeah, and Sigma, anything about the race in particular that you're excited about? <laughs> well, I'm just really happy to be racing Lovely Planet at a GDQ. When I ran it back in 2015, I thought, you know, this is just, it's pretty much just me running this game at the time. And <laughs> there's been a lot of people who joined the since, and Bullets has really played a lot of it and ground the time down, come up with new strats. So it's just awesome to be doing a race with this. Mm -hmm. All right, well, now I know, Sigma, you specifically have two other runs as well in the marathon where you're going to be doing Super Lovely Planet right after and you're going to have Ori in the Blind Forest later. So do you think you're going to, you know, really suck it up on the big stage when it comes to this race because you got to work for those other two as well? No, man, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, good. Good, that's what I like to hear. Uh, well, I want to jump right into some of the social media questions here because we got some actually really good ones. And the first one comes from uh, VidHVAT, which you've told me is actually the developers of Lovely Planet, right? Yes. And they ask, if there's one thing you could change about Lovely Planet, what would it be? More levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more levels. Another Lovely Planet 2 would be good. I think replays or a level editor would be awesome, but the game is just amazing as is, so more of it would be better. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good. All right, well, let's uh, ask the next one from Eel Spike, I think, is that how that's pronounced? So has, who asks, uh, what drew you guys to this game? Well, we got a little bit of that from you already, right? And, uh, mm -hmm. But had you played the game casually first? I guess I'll piggyback that on top of that Yeah, question. I played it casually before, but so as you guys might remember, SGDQ, I did Super Hot, so mm -hmm. I kind of wanted something in a similar vein to that where it's a first-person shooter, but with Lovely Planet, it's also got that sort of mechanic with movement as well where you're platforming on things and shooting things at the same time so there's kind of a balance with that as well so it adds a different element to it so it's pretty interesting so that's kind of what drew me to it cool and Sigma what, what drew you to the game really? I think I just picked it up on a Steam sale without any intentions <laughs> to speed run it or anything and it was just yeah this game's great nice just one of those that you found in your backlog. Yeah, you like, know, yeah. <laughs> five bucks who cares? Right <laughs> <laughs> alright uh, well now the one of the really cool things 
I think about this race and why it's gonna be really exciting is that even for the people who don't know, your PBs are one second apart, right? Even less, less than one less second. Less than one second apart. Yeah, yeah. okay, and there's a, there's a bit of a story to it, I've been told, so why don't you guys go ahead and just give me the kind of rundown of what happened with your PBs recently. Yeah, so uh, quite a while ago, I had ground Lovely Planet down to sub 10 for any percent. I had a 9.55, and then I wasn't running the game for quite a while. And then Bullets picked it up and really started the grind as well, and he also got a 9.55, about a third of a second faster than mine, so he had the world record then. And then at around that point, he asked me, hey, you want to submit this for AGDQ? Let's do a race. And I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds great. So we both start you know, practicing the game again, grinding the game again. We both PB again by pretty much the same amount. So I wound up with a very high 946, and Bullets wound up with a very low 947. So I think our <laughs> PBs are actually even closer and still within a second now. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty unbelievable. Okay, but now in the race scenario, let me hear your predictions of just kind of time and how how you how close do you think it's going to be? I'm not going to make you pick who's going to win because we all know it's going to be bullets. Uh, but, <laughs> but I want to know how close do you think it's going to be and how close you know to like optimal, how close to your PBs or whatever you think it's going to be. I think we're going to go into like the second half of the game pretty even and then just kind of depends on what happens there. But I think we're going to end within at least 15 seconds of each other, probably less. Something yeah. Like that, yeah. I definitely think within 20 seconds by the end, and I think we're both going to get a sub-11 on this. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> That's going to be pretty cool. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited for that. I'm actually commentating that run, so <laughs> it should be a blast. Oh, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of us are incredibly tired, I'll tell you, at home. <laughs> I think I think within 60 seconds, we went into two uncontrollable laughing fits with Vuligen as well. And uh, so be sure to tune in for the Lovely Planet race, even if you've never heard of it before. I want to ask one more Twitter question before we move on, and that is, uh, from at Nor Norsu Kampa asks, if Earth doesn't count, what is the loveliest planet of them all? Hmm. See, it's not a planet anymore, but I feel like Pluto. <laughs> but, you know, it gets a bad rap. It's like, you know, it kind of was, but now it's not. I feel bad for it, basically. So. All right, I'll go with the opposite end of the spectrum. Let's just say Jupiter. <laughs> Jupiter. Yeah. Right. Go the small one and the big one. <laughs> I mean, there's lots of it, so some of it's probably lovely, right? <laughs> it's not bad. Not bad. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys both for being here, and I will see you very shortly for the race as well. <laughs> That'll be exciting. And I want to take a moment to talk to you all about some prizes. And so, of course, you know, I don't even think he's really even left since I was oh. here a moment hi, ago. Hi, yeah, what's up? Hey, I was doing all right. How are you guys? <laughs> I'm pretty good, pretty good. Sent, ladies and gentlemen, here to talk about some prizes. Yeah, we have uh, a couple of really cool prizes coming up for this uh, this next block. Um. So uh, through Die, uh, open right now, we have uh, this lovely, lovely parlor set given us given to us by Duke Firebird. Uh, Pops, if you wouldn't mind giving me yeah, a hand no holding problem. these up. Uh, we have all four of the evil wizards who have stolen the color from the world. Sorry, I'm giving you a little little bit of a story spoiler on uh, Die here. So all four of these guys, in addition to uh, the four warp crystals that take you from the hub world into each individualized world, and uh, of course, the protagonist, Hugh, on his quest to restore the color to his world. Um, so that's going to be a $20 uh, minimum donation between now and the end of die. It's about an hour away, you know, get those donations in while you can. Also want to remind everyone that uh, going throughout the entire marathon, we have this lovely sketchbook by LLK full of all of her, you know, original art and depictions of all of the, the crazy stuff that's going on in this marathon. You can see the poppin' block there. There's some Contra. I'm on the first page. You know it's pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. There, there we go. We got, we got J-Hobs and a raccoon. Yes. Things that go together like yes. butter and jelly, or so I'm told. <laughs> Um, and in addition to that, we have, uh, you know, the great uh, Octopus GDQ banner that's running all through today. Um, and our, of course, our grand prize, the 8th generation console bundle with an Xbox One, a PS4, and a Nintendo Switch. Um, so, hey, you know, guys, get those donations in. You can always go to gamesdonequick.com, um, and you'll find all the information you need in the tracker about prizes you can uh, donate for, uh, incentives you can uh, put your money towards, and all kinds of the cool stuff that's coming up uh, during the event. Well. I'm pretty excited about it, and I know you are as well. We're all just a little low energy from being tired this morning. Don't worry, folks. Uh, but, yeah, that's all we got for you now, and I want to throw it over to the host, and we've got TGH coming up with Die pretty soon. Take it away. Very good, very good. Uh, lovely Planet uh, will be on uh, after an interview with Die and uh, Die here, so definitely stick around for that awesome race. 
And right now we're going to jump right into Die with TGH. Here we go. All right, we good? All right, cool. Uh, so I'll count down from five. All right. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. All right. So uh, this is Die, uh, side-scrolling 2D platformer. Um, think Kirby meets Super Meat Boy. That's the best way I can describe it. Uh, so we enter this overworld. Uh, we can collect pigments. Uh, so basically, uh, the main character is called Hugh, uh, fittingly enough, uh, to fit in with a the theme of color. Uh, you're collecting five pigments per level. Um, basically, the four necrolites, or basically mages or wizards, uh, stole the color from this world. Uh, and it's your job to get it back, or basically collect all these pigments from all the levels. Uh, 60 pigments per world uh, is minimum. And the more pigments you collect, the more levels you unlock. And it's basically just a collect-a-thon. It's pretty self-explanatory, honestly. Um, and basically, that's kind of it, and just kind of enjoy the gameplay. Uh, I'll introduce my couch. Uh, actually, they can introduce themselves. Sure. Uh, my name is Lordimus. Um, Mike. I um, am one of the co-devs with, uh, with my uh, buddy here. Uh, my name is Danny. Um, I go by Minern. Um, but yeah, so we're from Backcountry Games. This is actually a game that we made. Um, anyway, so yeah, we're happy to be sitting on the couch with TGH. This is, this is awesome. So I did uh, most of the, the the level design and the coding, and Danny did most of the, well, pretty much all of the art, music, and UI work. Um, one of the things you'll notice is, as uh, TGH goes through these levels is that um, each level contains five uh, pigments. So we talked about Hugh restoring color to the world. So each time he grabs a pigment, you'll see the screen kind of pan over and um, color be restored to the, uh, to the level a bit. Um, and then when you get back to the, the hub of the world, so we're in the purple world right now, the first world, um, you'll see the pigments are actually floating about in the, the main area and the color will be slowly restored to that, um, that area as well. So that's kind of the main, the main theme and the, the point of what this little dude is doing. Right, and as far as mechanics go, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's got your, your standard jump, your uh, wall jump, wall stick. And then, um, but we also have a float mechanic, which you'll see him use, uh, especially like just frequently throughout the game. Yeah, not there, <laughs> not apparently. There. Um, but so the float will just help control your fall and help you um, just control your, your movement. So there's an example of the float. So we did just see the first example of an intentional death. Here's another one. So the scroll uh, levels in this game. Um, to allow you to kind of push push the limits and not get caught up by the um, the auto scroller uh, boundaries, you can actually self destruct on uh, right past a checkpoint and you will respawn on the checkpoint with the camera um, immediately panning to you. So that's one of those the uh, the IL strats and uh, the strats that you use here as well. Whoops. Uh, I will be saying uh, so that's one death. I'll be donating one dollar um, for every unintentional death. Again, there are quite a few intentional deaths uh, meant to gain time, but... Yeah, so um, Mike and I will be donating $5 for every un unintentional death. Oh boy. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, no pr no pressure. And then um, some of our friends back on the couch behind us uh, will also be donating per unintentional death. Yep, speaking of, $50 donation from Duke Firebird. I cannot wait for the die one. Uh, myself and the developers, Lermus and Maneri, will be donating per unintentional death during die. We love you, TGH. Love you too, Duke. Thanks, man. Whoops. Yeah, Duke made some absolutely incredible perlers that they showed just before the show. And um, anyways, and he was nice enough to make make some for Mike and myself as well. Yeah. So Those are growing up immediately when we get home. Yeah, so thank you. <laughs> those those are fantastic. And this is a huge privilege, too, to be here supporting this awesome cause. And it's, it's really been great to watch Teach put in so much work and skill into this run. It's really really progressed really well over the last couple months and really fun to watch well and, and it's just strange to watch something that you know I mean we made the game but 
we never reached this level of proficiency with the game. To, oh, so yeah. to see somebody just completely blow through it is incredible. Also, a little bit about the um, the speedrun mode we're doing. It's any percent no hard mode. So in this game, um, basically to 100%, there's a uh, normal and a hard mode for each each level. Um, the normal mode is what you're seeing here. Basically, grab all five pigments and you're done. Uh, for hard mode, we remove all the checkpoints and there's extra, extra um, obstacles. Um, you know, other death death spikes, etc., just stuff like that. Um, the reason we do the, the no hard mode um, is basically just to tone down the run a bit, uh, brings it down to a normal, um, to a, a quicker time. It also just removes a lot of the repetition because you'd, you'd be going back and doing basically the same level, just again, it wouldn't be as much fun as this. Yeah, just a harder version of the same level. And then within the game, there are three different types of levels. There's the, um, the, the normal level, which you see here. There's also the auto-scrollers. And then um, later in each world, there's a set of uh, challenge levels. And um, the challenge levels are a little bit different. We'll talk about them whenever we get to that point. Yeah, the game's very straightforward, just like... Uh just like Couch said, uh, but there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of faster ways to do things. Uh, for instance, like you'll see some shortcuts in some levels that are very difficult to take. Um, I'll be taking some of those since it's a real time run. A lot of IL uh, runners use those strats since that's the most optimal, and you can obviously reset over and over doing an IL and not have to worry about you know resetting an entire run. Um, shout outs by the way to uh, Mitchell who owns I think pretty much 80% of the uh, of the IL records in this game and also helped a lot with routing of the ILs as well. Also shout outs to Extra Tricky who uh, routed a lot of these levels as well including this one. And these challenge levels too also um, there are 100 uh, dust particles in these levels. Uh, each 20 count as one pigment. Uh, so basically, there's still five pigments on the level, but I'm collecting all the dust particles uh, as well. I'll basically, uh, typically be collecting all of them uh, in the challenge levels that we do, with the exception of a few in the green world. So, and with these levels, there's no there's no checkpoints. So when you die, you have to start the level over. Yeah, that's the most um, difficult part about those challenge levels as well. So if you notice at the top, we're in the purple um, world hub right now. It's a lot more colorful than it was before, of course, but. Uh, we've got 50 out of that 140, just went away. Uh, you need 50 to unlock the boss, and we are there now. So here we have the vultures. Yep, this boss is pretty interesting. Um, you just need to, basically, we have uh, we have strats to stand in certain places to guide these fireballs uh, to hit the vultures. The aim is to have the fireballs hit the vultures. Um, in order to do that, you just crash. <laughs> oh, no. You need is there, to patch there that. Is there a dev in the house? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this has never happened yeah. before. Wow. <laughs> so I'm closing the program. All right, we'll get this right back up soon. Um, hopefully it doesn't happen again. The data should save, so it's not like I have to start the run over again. Hang on one second. Whoops, that's not the right one. Meantime, we've got a $100 donation from Space Cowboy. Hey, TGH, try not to die too much. No more than 15 times. It's too late, right? man. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why that happened. We've also got a $20 donation from Efren Deer. It says, hello, HDQ. Hello, TGH. Hope you all have a wonderful die run. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Yeah, we should have <laughs> auto-saved. Which I'm dying uh, to watch. Yeah. TGH, no return of the slurry speech, please. Yeah, we'll be right back to the vulture boss, which is poopy. Oh, there we go. It's free right, cool. this time. We're right back there. Okay, as I was saying, um, so you're standing at certain points to uh, to guide the fireballs uh, back to hit the vultures. Uh, the first one's easy. You just got to stand right in the middle on top, or you can stand uh, in the middle there. In the meantime, avoiding all the fireballs that are eventually going to hit the vultures. So in a casual playthrough, this boss can be pretty hectic because you end up having multiple vultures on the screen at once <coughs> with seemingly randomly random fireballs. Um, but once you get the strat down and, and know where to 
you can manipulate where the vultures and the wizard are shooting the fireballs and pretty much make it very clean. Yep. Shout yes. out to Tizam, who is the uh, the vulture king. The vulture king, yes. <laughs> so <clears throat> there's a specific strat I can try here uh, to get a quick kill, see if I can get it. Um, it's very precise, uh, especially the last fireball. Stand here, and we'll stand there. Uh, I feel like I got it. Let's see. Just gotta wait, kinda. Nope, I didn't get it. Okay, so that's like a couple seconds lost. It's very precise, especially the uh, the last fireball. We get to hear yeah. more of the so soundtrack. That's vultures. There we go. Eight minutes, first world. And that's purple. It's purple. Uh, that's the first world. So now we're gonna move on to blue. Now, as far as the game goes, the difficulty ramps up dramatically starting around blue. Um, TGH makes it, look e makes it look easy, but um, the difficulty definitely starts to spike around now. Should we count that as an intentional death, by the way? Or an unintentional <laughs> death? Or multiple? I don't think you actually died, so... I didn't die. <laughs> yeah. The game died, I didn't. It's not my fault. I blame, so purple, I blame we, Mike. Yeah, that's probably on me. In purple, we saw a few um, mechanics in, in blue. Some of the themes are that these levels are much larger, um, so in a casual playthrough they can be more difficult, especially the hard modes. Um, but here we'll, even in level one, we start to see um, ice melting, so light yourself on fire with a torch. And uh, you can keep that fire going by hitting some more torches, and that's how you melt the ice to get the pigments. And one of the things with the, the fire as you, uh, whenever you ignite yourself, um, if you use the float while ignited, it'll actually put it out. So um, it, it forces you to kind of change things up a little bit. Yep. Well, we're getting to some parts where we're gonna have some, some tricky jumps start to happen. Yep. These jumps, uh, you learn pretty quickly playing casually that it's not as simple as just holding up against the wall and jumping uh, around those spikes. Um, specifically those jumps on the walls uh, around the spikes. Uh, here's where the game starts to tell you, you know, you really need to like start to change your trajectory in midair um, if you can. Where am I going? Well, I thought I was on a different level. I can confirm for my own casual play that those jumps are indeed much harder than they look. <laughs> by the way, the soundtrack for this game is absolutely awesome. And uh, every song was composed by, uh, by Minern on the couch, so. Shout outs to him. Thank you. Yeah, we got a lot of positive feedback about the about the song. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> That's no big deal. I think um, the general consensus consensus was that the vulture theme was the favorite in chat. Yes. Yeah, that's my favorite, that's my favorite mm -hmm. from the soundtrack for sure was the vulture theme. My favorite is the final boss track, but we never get to the the end drop of the TGP <laughs> Never hear the second half of it. Yeah. yeah. So here's another pretty tricky jump. Yeah, so those jumps are very difficult casually. You need to sort of learn how to how to maneuver those in order to get past that part. You notice that a lot of the titles of these levels are actually uh, named after some some uh, pop culture references. Some of them are pretty obvious. We got pop, pop culture references. We've got um, some movie and book references, and we've got some. Uh, we even got a name um, after Velhart, who is a streamer that's in the. Uh, I don't think he's in the crowd right now, but he's he's on premise. He was the, the first guy to beat this 100% um, upon release. So. And then we've got the whole world, of course, which is named after TGH. Yeah, it was it was fun watching Bellhart 100% that for the first time. That was that was interesting for sure. And the game has quite changed quite a lot since then. And for for the speedrunning community specifically, there, you'll notice there's quite a few. Um, functionality built in. We do have um, IGTs, so we've got in-game timers. We've got um, IL timers, full game. Uh, we, we track the different categories. 100%, um, any percent, no hard mode, which is what we're watching here. Um, you won't see this here, but we do have a, a ghost system. And if 
you're not familiar with that or not sure what I mean, it's, it's basically once you defeat a level with all five pigments, so once you 100% a level, then if, if you play that one from now on, then you'll have um, a little ghost there, which basically has recorded and tracked your path, so you can uh, practice against yourself, um, which is kind of neat. There's a faster cycle I can make in this level, um, or not faster, it's just the best the best cycle. It uh, requires pretty tight movement around uh, this part right here with these moving spikes. So let's see if I can get it. If all is done correctly, I won't have to wait for these spikes at the end of this hallway, and I got it. Nice. nice. And part two is this. All right, nice, cool. This part looks really cool if done correctly. Yeah, that, nice. that's yeah, so one of my keep, favorite sections. Keeping in mind, you can't float during that section either, or else you snuff out the flame. Um, so you can go underneath that, but you won't get the pigment as a result. Yeah, so there are quite a few places within the levels that <clears throat> there are easier routes to take, but they do take longer. And of course, we're missing a lot of the insane Mij IL strats. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't do what Mij does. Do not try at home on the keyboard, no less. I have one IL record for this game, and Midge is going to take it probably today. I think he's working during on it right this run. Now. <laughs> yeah, I think he said something like that on Discord. My claim to fame for ILs. <laughs> I think quick clarification for anyone unfamiliar with uh, what they're talking about there. IL refers to individual levels, yes. so the yes. best Sorry time on a single level. That. We've also got a $5 donation from Chef47. Glad to see Die at GDQ, and even happier to see Tej run in another game. Proud of you, my man. Bus die wide open. Good luck on Crash Percent from Kraz and I both. <laughs> Thank you, dude. So yeah, you may recognize Tej from uh, last year's Undertale run, which was a big hit. So we're very pleased to have him representing our game as well. That was an awesome run. So, uh, fun fact about this level, um, this level was actually patched uh, basically in order to uh, accommodate the speedrun community. I uh, used to have to wait a long, a really long time for this cart to come back, um, but now it just kind of books it back, and it makes this pigment up here uh, actually faster to get. It used to be slower. It used to be a skippable to, pigment, yeah. It used to make it up in uh, Blue Challenge 4, I believe, but, uh, yeah, but now it comes back a lot quicker. One of the many ways, honestly, that this game has really accommodated uh, the speedrun community, which which uh, you don't find too often these days, actually. I think it's pretty awesome. And on this level, you'll see a strat which Tej has come up with gonna try it it. today, yesterday? <laughs> uh, something like that. So we used to self-destruct, or I used to self-destruct, rather, on, um, on this checkpoint right here but I recently found a way to skip that. It's a lot tighter to get this cycle. You can skip the bottom half of this uh, part of the level by doing this strat. So you basically skip that, but then this part is pretty tight. And I actually might miss it. So basically, if you hit those lasers, okay, you'll right. get frozen and just fall to your death. Good. So that was pretty perfect Very nice. right there. Right, so... That whole segment was one of those things that the speedrun community found, and we were just completely dumbfounded. That's not something that we had <laughs> intended, or they skipped the entire section, and we just we left it in because it was just fun to watch. We'll have another unintended skip coming up. This looks really cool if done correctly. If done correctly. Like he's gonna get it. Nice. Yep. So you're supposed to use that orange flame right there to uh, to melt that ice, but slightly faster to use the green one. Keeping again, keeping in mind you can't float, which makes that strat pretty difficult. Probably the most important level in uh, in the blue world right here. Very long challenge level. It's about a minute long, uh, and if you die again, you have to either restart the level or get your last couple of pigments in blue challenge four, which is pretty slow.
We've got a $50 donation from Maggie Obi-Wan. TGH, good luck on the die run, and don't forget to hug the goat. Uh, no, wait, that's the wrong game. Uh, hug the oh. spikes? Oh, no. I blame Maggie for that death, let's be honest. What's up, dude? <laughs> Thank you, man. We've also got a $50 anonymous donation. Had to donate during Tiege's Super Meat Kirby run. <laughs> this week, my dad starts his second battle against cancer, and we're all hoping it'll be successful and lead to many more years of gaming together. Thanks for all that you do. I did not do that part correctly. Whatever. So this end part is completely cycle based, uh, so I'm just going to wait for the cycle to come back. There we go. Oh, that was weird. That was kind of close. Very we're nice. fine. <laughs> Alright, so now we're headed over to uh, Ice Golem, which is the boss of the Blue Worlds. Uh, there's a little bit of a speed strat here um, involving this dude. We're going to skip a cycle, or we're going to try, at least. So he shoots. So basically, this dude fall. gets really mad, yeah. throws a tantrum, lights himself on fire, and allows you to melt the ice blocks and get away from him. He's not very smart. Somehow the ice doesn't melt. Can you explain that? No. <laughs> Video game logic. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. I, I don't know. Why are there floating eyeballs that shoot fireballs? <laughs> I mean, get with it, guys. Come on. Seriously. This is just plain physics. Little slimes with spiky helmets. <laughs> Alright, so one last little thing to avoid here. This boss is very important to do first time because it's a huge backtrack to die there. And, and that's blue. 10 16 isn't bad. Uh, sub 10 is obviously possible, but I think that death in uh, challenge three was a uh, yeah. costly. Yeah. The blue levels Whatever. are significantly yeah. longer than the purple levels as well. Yeah. So now we're gonna get into the green worlds, uh, or as I like to call it, the uh, the yellow worlds, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see why. Um, but yeah, so uh, it starts to uh, to introduce a lot of puzzly elements. Um, including uh, teleportation mushrooms, uh, or whatever they're officially called. Um, yeah, they're little mushrooms. Yeah. Just, uh, it, it uh, yeah, it's yellow, see? <laughs> <laughs> there's to me a mushrooms in the achievements. So I think this is really the first level where um, a casual player will look at it and go, and go like, what do I do? Like, what is the, what is the objective here? Um, it's not apparent at first. Right, so there's the teleportation mushrooms which are introduced here, and then there's also um, the little moving platforms that he's on, and then the, uh, the springboards. And the springboards definitely take some practice. It's a little bit trial and error. You just have to like kind of go in the mushrooms and the first see what's puzzle, there puzzle before you really start to evolve. Yep. Emerge. This is probably one of my favorite levels in the game, though, because once you finally figure it out, it there's something kind of satisfying about it. This level's pretty cool. Honestly, all these levels are cool. Um, especially like the mid to later green levels, I'm really a fan of, like green six and green four. The second half right here coming up is pretty tricky from here on out. So this jump right here looks pretty simple when he does it. It's very difficult for a casual friend. Yeah, so again, all of the level design was done by Mike, um, and he did an awesome job. And then here, this part you just kind of have to throw yourself up here and hope you don't get hit, and I didn't. Nice. That's cool. Very nice. Yeah, the cycle can kind of screw you over there, but if I, I just say, like, there's a checkpoint right there, so if I die, it's like, so be it. I lose two seconds. 
Or would I, well, I'm going the wrong way. $5 anonymous donation says, Good luck on the run, Tej. I went to bed early and woke up especially early just to watch you. Thank you. This part can be tricky. So if you blink, you miss it. Uh, that pigment... Oops, I died. <laughs> um, it's hard to talk and play this game. Uh, that pigment over on the right is the only pigment that we skip in a normal uh, level that we do. And we get that back in uh, Green Challenge 2. One of the, the, the first Green Challenge that we do, we get it back in. That last one requires you to ride that slow platform all the way down and then do a jump over, and it's just not worth it. Now, we have seen players actually, there's a, um, a diagonal row of shorter spikes, and you can actually wall jump off of the side of those platforms. That is stupid hard. It's, it's insane. stupid hard. And, but we have seen it done. This is one of my favorite levels. Just kidding, I hate this level. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's... There are 15 intentional deaths in the run, so we're going to take the total um, the total deaths at the end and subtract 15, and then that'll be, that'll be the total. Speaking of, we've also got a $20 donation from Ramil Gaming. It says, TGH, the swag duck is behind you. Dollar <laughs> for each unintentional death. Very nice. Thanks, dude. We've got $20 from Kona Rican. Must donate for such an orange in a game and one that looks so fun. Take some green backs for such a wonderful cause. <laughs> Let's work together to stop cancer from making people so blue. I hope this donation is red, just so I could work in one more pun. Fantastic. <laughs> Very nice. level aptly named parkour yeah and this one you spend very little time on the ground oh stupid deaths there we go that pesky spike <laughs> all you have to do is jump to get over $10 donation from Mental Mute 2. Shout out to TGH and the devs. Keep up the awesome work and help others keep the colors vibrant. Yep, so you just saw the, uh, the spike wall open up above, so. Yep, we just gotta make it back in time for that one. Yep. It's a loop around. There's supposedly a strat to get that with some stupid wall jump, but. I'll leave that to Midge. So this part of the level, you can actually jump through these, um, these diagonal bullets, but I'm not gonna try that. You can, but it's pretty luck-based. Basically, I don't think I've even seen that done. I've done it on accident before. All right, so this level is uh, ultra confusing for a casual player at first. Um, you need to set off that left cart first before hitting the right one. So that when you take this mushroom up here uh, to teleport back toward the left side of the level, this cart is on its way back. So there is water in the levels, and um, Hugh can't swim. Yeah, he's got no arms. <laughs> he also can't grab the uh, the bottom of the, the platforms there, which can be takes some getting used to because he has no arms. <laughs> uh, so one other thing about the hub worlds is that as you um, as you grab the pigments. Uh, throughout each level, they actually reappear into the hub world. So if you go through and collect all of them, you could end up seeing all 140 pigments floating around the hubs. Th 
best track in the game right here. Best music track in the game. Yeah, this is the Vultures theme, oh, actually. Something's right there. So after um, after you beat a boss, the the track from each boss will be reintroduced into the levels. And that was a request from the community, actually. All right, so that pigment that I skipped in uh, in green three, uh, we're gonna get back here, and this level is actually really convenient to do because this uh, these first twenty dust pigments. Uh, are pretty convenient, and then there's just a spike right there. Just jump into it after 20 straight, yeah. and so, that counts as one. So uh, that made a nine, one. a nine second level. All right, this level's super important. This is this is one of the more challenging levels uh, in the game when you're, uh, especially when you're on pace for a decent run, which I'm not really, but <laughs> because right here it keeps you up in the air for quite a while. Yep. But this is my personal favorite level in the game. I absolutely love this one. And once again, dying on these challenge levels uh, sets you back all the way at the beginning, so you there, there. no checkpoints. All right, that was okay. Nice. Good, go. nice. nice. All right, my buddy. <laughs> Give him a little kiss. Slime King. So. Uh, other fun fact, I died so many times playing this game casually that they had to nerf it. <laughs> a few times. <laughs> yeah, this this boss, though, um, I can leave further explanation up to, to you guys, but uh, this boss has been through several uh, iterations. Yeah, so this boss has been through a, a quite a few iterations, actually, but um, <clears throat> the mechanics themselves are pretty straightforward. Uh, whenever the, the Slime King actually lands, he'll, he'll spit up a bunch of slime or fireballs, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then the uh, the Necrolite will actually summon fire on onto the ground. So it's all about just progressing through the level um, and trying to make it to the end while dodging everything that the level throws at you. So and a big part of mastering this is understanding how to keep tabs on what's happening above you so you don't get caught by surprise by these fireballs. Uh, the other thing that goes on here is he just took the mushroom down below. Uh, for the extra boss achievement, there's actually a path if you see some... Uh, little uh, springboards that we just passed by you can go up over that spike wall um, and to do if you do that then you get the extra achievement and unlock an extra skin for this boss this part is tricky right here all right we got it nice so that part um, is slightly luck dependent um, or it's it's luck dependent to get a uh, that's a really good green time by the way actually yeah um, it's slightly luck dependent to get a fireball pattern that's not like ultra hard to avoid but um um, I will certainly take a first try Slime King there. And that's green or yellow, AKA. One world left. Awesome. Yep, one world left and it is uh, it is not the easiest world. <laughs> oh uh, no. The game throws everything it has at you uh, for this last world. So uh, better be prepared. Well, to celebrate that awesome green world, we have a $500 donation from Pans2. Wow. simply says shout out to the graveyard crew good luck on the run Tej. runner's <laughs> choice thanks dude Crash. oh no <laughs> this this honestly this is surprising because this game is really crash this game is well made and i've never seen it crash like this i was playing it earlier on this computer and it wasn't crashing so i'm not sure what's going on in the meantime, we got a $10 donation from PDX Geek. It's amazing to see a game played live with the devs. As a software developer myself, I'd like to ask you if you planned all the paths for many of the sequences or were planning something different. How did it make you feel to see the changes? And thank you, AGDQ, for putting this all together. Do you want to take that, Mike? Um, could you read the question again? <laughs> oh, no. So they were they were basically asking about the, the paths. I'm assuming them in the, the level design paths. Uh, um, yeah, they certainly found quite a few unintended paths, um, even unintended strats. I mean, the, the auto-scroller um, intentional deaths on checkpoints, that was certainly a surprise. Um, there we go. There's several levels, like the one Teach pointed out in Blue World, where um, we actually changed the an entire section of a level to, to suit the community. and. Uh, they were taking a path we weren't expecting, and it, take, it ended up taking a lot longer than 
Um, they were having to skip that whole section entirely, so we, we, we uh, band-aided it. But yeah, um, it's really interesting what happens when you go from just internal playtesting to people getting their hands on it that really know what they're doing and speedrunning, and um, some really awesome stuff ends up happening. Well, and the speedrunning community can pick apart a game really quickly. For um, sure. So they they, prov they provided a ton of great feedback. It's a hard thing right there. there Obviously, they didn't tell us about all the game crashes, but that's fine. <laughs> I've never had a game crash on me. I'm not sure what's going on. I've wrong. never seen it crash. It might be it, this. it might be something to do with the flash card or the the flash drive. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Off Steam, this game will most likely never crash on you. If it does, let us know. You can find us on Twitter. And this level is the level that I struggle with the most. That whole section right there, he made it look easy. And that, that one section is the hardest section in the game for me. The second half's difficult, too. It's very easy to... Yep. That skull can really catch you right there on that bounce up. So speed right there is really important. He, he got around it really easily. So. so one of the new mechanics that we introduced in red here was uh, you see the little skulls that'll start chasing you around, and there's um, there's these little locks that you can trigger to actually disable the skulls. Um, so it'll make it'll make the level a little bit easier for you, but it typically will lock out a pigment, so you'll lose you'll lose being able to collect one of those pigments, but you'll make the level a little easier for yourself. Right. It's typically a casual run strat where you don't care about getting all the pigments. You just want to get 50 for the world and advance to the boss and beat the game. Um, for here, we never we never use that. Once again, utilizing self-destructing on checkpoints just to scroll the screen further forward. Got a generous $152 donation from Ack the Boca. It says, when will TGH go to Turtle Rock? <laughs> <laughs> I blame Mac for that death. <laughs> Shout outs to Act the Prophet. That's a pretty hard thread the needle there. Uh, okay, good. This level's called Patience, and if you've ever played this level, you know why. This level's called Patience, and I have none, so. <laughs> Very nice. The beginning half of this level, too, is treacherous. T just quoted this level many times as being the hardest one in the game, especially this jump coming up right here. There we go. Yeah, that's the, you have to kind of like S shape your jump there a little bit to get past that. We do have a uh, little tombstone with a death tracker up in the top left-hand corner, and it tracks it per level. Um, and watching watching people on Twitch play is always fun because, um, I mean, we've seen some levels that have been in the hundreds of deaths. and I've seen just, that past level reach almost 1,000. That's crazy. <laughs> there are some very dedicated people. Yes. We've got a $150 donation from Atkasha. Thanks for making me stay up. As always, <laughs> all the best to you, TGH. Thanks, Atkasha. Can I beat this? This level's called Aerials for a decent reason, I would say. This level's called Critters. For another Maybe. decent reason. <laughs> <laughs> More slimes with spiky helmets. Oh, come on. Got a $10 donation from Ghost King. Hey, it's my dude, TGH. Said I couldn't be there this time. Was awesome hanging out last AGDQ. Hope to be at SGDQ again, though. Good luck in the run. Thanks to the devs for coming out and offer some insight to this neat game. Cheers, Ghost King. Yeah, well, thanks, Ghost King.
Only two deaths. <laughs> the world Oops. record is is not deathless, by the way. No, it's not. I think we may have mentioned that, but it's something like 14, 15 deaths. So. At least you died early on the challenge level, so. Wasn't right. As far as I know, there's never been a deathless run. Oops. Uh, okay. That's fine. Sort of. Maybe not. Let's see if I can juke the skull. Got him. Okay, there we go. Oh, nope, nice I missed one. one. <laughs> nope, I get. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I got him, but I didn't. I have a $5 donation from Dark Art 800 Hey, Teej, don't forget that the boots are in redacted. Oh Oops, uh, didn't mean to give you a spoiler. Uh, anyway, good luck in this run. I did the same thing. We'll get through this level eventually. Also have a $20 donation. Hey, Teej, Abutu here. Awesome to see you run a game at GDQ again, and to see the devs supporting our community for their game. Keep up the great work. I'm sorry, Duke. <laughs> <laughs> this is not an easy segment. <laughs> well, these are challenge levels for a reason. There we go. Very nice. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> Saved. So this level, you hit the timer there, and uh, it opens up a gate up top. And it's kind of risk-reward for how much you want to try to chew off the level by how much you want to, just how much, uh, how many dust particles you want to get before actually entering this area. Extra Tricky, who is on premise somewhere around here, has the IL level for this one by an insane margin. None of us have any idea how he pulled that off. We're doing this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to activate this skin. So the way the skins work Whoops. in this game is you basically get a base skin for defeating the boss and then an extra <laughs> skin for defeating um, an extra boss achievement on that boss. So here he's defeated this boss before, so he gets to wear his horns as a trophy. Which looks totally natural. <laughs> so this is the final boss. Uh, so... Basically, he's gonna throw. Uh, here we go. He's gonna throw a bunch of skulls at me, uh, and then I'm supposed to collect these jewels, uh, shaped like keys or with keys on them rather, uh, in order to make the skulls disappear. Mage comes over, sets the platforms on fire. It can be easy to die if you don't pay attention, but the strat I use is pretty, is pretty okay, pretty manageable. And time ends once uh, the final skull is uh, is gone, or the final key is gotten. Yeah. So before my time is up, I just want to thank. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, the devs for for coming out and being on the couch showing support you guys are awesome thank you so much yeah like this. Th this has been great this has been a lot of fun i was saying earlier prob probably the only instance this gdq where the the couch actually knows more than the runner about the game <laughs> as, it, as it should be in this case but yeah thank you guys very much well it's it's fun to actually see somebody play it at this level of proficiency as well i mean it's it's I, it's a little mind-blowing uh we do have a discord for speedrunning. uh die if you want to join yeah. we're all active there, there we go. and we time's coming up on this last jewel and time very nice nice so yeah that's die um hope you guys enjoyed it um i certainly enjoy it it's an awesome game it's just a clean game uh if you're looking for a good challenge uh it's a really nice side scrolling platformer uh, precision platformer, simple controls, uh, but very precise gameplay. Um, if you guys are interested, give it a shot. Even try speedrunning it. Um, I'm TGH. Thanks, guys. Very much appreciated.
Yeah, thank you guys very thank much. Thank you.